Want to convert your movie collection to digital files that you can play on your TV or computer? This is how you do it. To rip all your DVD and Blu-ray discs to digital files, you need three things. A DVD or Blu-ray reader, software to convert the movie files, and advice to store and play those movies. There are many ways to accomplish this, but I'm about to show you the best way. The first thing you're going to need is a DVD reader so that you can read the disc into your computer and do the conversion. My system requires an external because I don't have one built in, and I went ahead and spent a little bit extra money to get a combo Blu-ray DVD reader and writer. So if you want the flexibility, I recommend this one. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's highly rated, and I'll put a link in the description of the video. Just make sure you get a Blu-ray and a DVD combo if you intend to copy Blu-ray discs as well. The second thing you're going to need is software to do the file conversion from your DVD discs. I recommend using Make MKV Beta. MKV files are fairly standard and this program will convert your DVD disc into an MKV file that you can store on your hard drive. You can see by the list of options here that it reads DVD and Blu-ray discs, it reads Blu-ray discs that are protected, and it preserves all the video and audio tracks including HD audio. This is great because you end up with a complete representation of your original DVD disc on a hard drive file and then you can copy it to a variety of different devices. So let's go ahead and download Make MKV. You can see here you have versions for Windows or Mac and there is even a Linux version as well. I'm going to choose the Windows version. It's going to download the files for install. Open that. It asks which language you want it to install. Hit next. I'm going to accept the terms of the license. And I'm going to leave these defaulted as checked. Choosing a location to do the install. And a folder name. And that's it. It's installed. Let's go ahead and run it. Now the first thing I'm going to recommend is come up here to View and go to Preferences. And you can set a default directory where it copies your files. So I've set up a DMovies folder. Under Video tab, you can set the default destination. I choose Semi-Auto and then I put in the same folder. And what that does is it automatically creates a subfolder for each disk that I'm importing in. There's also an option here to set the minimum length for the title that you want to convert. So what happens is a lot of DVDs come with multiple tracks that include your original movie as well as commentary and other types of titles. When you set this to 1200 seconds, that's 20 minutes, so I'm eliminating all of those small files because all I really want is the hour and a half or two hour long movie. But if you want to see all the different commentary, you can set this to a lower amount. You can leave the defaults on the rest of these, hit OK, and now you're ready to load a disk. When you insert a DVD into your drive, it begins loading the information. It determines the label of the DVD and the protection that's set up on it. Come up here to File and go to Open Disk and select your reader from the menu there. This scans the file in preparation for the conversion. And it comes up with a list of two different titles, both the same size, this is probably just a copy, so I'm going to turn that one off. So I have one file now selected to convert. Click this button to make the MKV file. It's going to create a folder just for that, and it begins the conversion. Now this process can take a number of minutes depending on the size of the file that you're trying to convert. After it calculates for a few seconds, it'll come up with an elapsed time and a projected time for completion. And since this is a Blu-ray disc with a very large file, it's going to take quite a while to complete. This is probably one of the longer ones. I've seen them anywhere from about 15 minutes to 25 minutes typically. And for Blu-ray, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. So let's skip ahead. And as you can see, it took about 30 minutes to complete that conversion. Hit OK. And now we can take a look at our folder. And there's our converted file. And you can right click on this and cast it to a device or open it. It'll play that file. The final item you're going to need is storage for these very large video files that you've converted. My current collection is about 200 videos and it takes up 1.3 terabytes. 
So I purchased this external Seagate backup drive. It holds two terabytes and uses a USB connection so I can plug it into the various devices and run my video files. A USB connection works very well if you have a TV with a USB port on it or something like a Roku Ultra that has a USB port you can plug the hard drive in and play your videos directly. USB is universal to a lot of different devices and the MKV files can be read easily on many of those devices as well. The reason I recommend a 2 terabyte external hard drive and not something larger is because of the limitations of many devices. For example, the Roku Ultra will only allow up to 2 terabytes for an external hard drive plugged into the USB port. Anything larger and it won't read the drive at all. You can't even partition a larger hard drive into 2 terabyte blocks. It won't read any of those. Now I will warn you that some USB ports on TVs or a Roku Ultra don't provide enough power to handle an external hard drive and you may need an inline power booster like this USB hub. So I ordered one of these and added it to my system as well. I've also found that this USB 2.0 extension cable is a must have. It often works without the need for a USB powered hub. The reason why is because it forces the communication between your hard drive and your device to run at 2.0 speeds, which sometimes makes the two talk better together. I found this to be true of the Roku Ultra. It's inexpensive and it's probably something you should keep on hand in case you need it. I'll provide links to all of these devices in the description below the video. And that covers everything you need to digitize your DVD movie collection. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I discuss how this works with a Roku Ultra. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching TV Sneak Peek. If you have better suggestions for TV shows, tell us about it in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon to get notified of future videos.